for SARS-CoV-2, we have a really huge burden in the world. We're not expecting it to die out the same way uh, SARS-1 did. Scientists around the world are rushing to find a vaccine for the COVID-19 pandemic, which has infected more than 3 million people worldwide. A vaccine helps the body's immune system to recognize and fight viruses or bacteria, which then keeps us safe from the diseases they cause. Essentially, a vaccine can protect us against COVID-19. But in reality, vaccines can take years or even decades to develop and cost countries a lot of money. In the case of SARS, the virus killed itself off before a vaccine was ever found. More than 10 years later, there is still no vaccine for SARS. So you might be wondering, what exactly does it take to develop a vaccine? And more importantly, is it safe to end lockdowns and other similar measures like circuit breaker without there being a vaccine? To find out more, I speak with Dr. Ashley St. John, who is an assistant professor at Duke NUS Medical School. So I run a lab where my lab does research into uh, how immune responses are raised to pathogens, including emerging infectious diseases. So uh, a vaccine is a way to give your body a little glimpse of a pathogen, um, something that is just enough to trigger its memory response uh, so that you can remember it and the next time you see it, fight it off better. So a vaccine is usually uh, not the pathogen itself, not at full strength, or even the smallest little parts of the pathogen um, that you can possibly give uh, to activate the immune response and lead to um, a memory response, basically. So it's like a practice. It's a pra practice um, exposure to, to the pathogens. Uh, so the first thing you need is you need to have an idea who your enemy is. What kind of pathogen is this? Um, and know a little bit about how it infects. What sorts of tissues and organs do we want to protect with a vaccine? So then we come up with a strategy to um, develop the vaccine. What kind of vaccine would be best? So there are different kinds of vaccines. Some of them are just weakened versions of the pathogen. Um, some of them are just little tiny parts of it. Then there's testing. And so testing is a long process. It's actually one of the most critical processes. And it starts in the lab where you do preclinical testing. Uh, then the next step is to take it a little bit bigger scale and try to test it in humans. And then after that, you wanna do efficacy testing. So you wanna test in the community and really show that not only is it safe, but it also can protect you from the virus. Um, but then of course, uh, you wanna scale up, you need to produce the, va the vaccine and distribute it. SARS did die out before a vaccine could be tested. And this is an obstacle, and it's one of the reasons why a lot of vaccine testing gets, is, is now being fast-tracked during uh, the outbreak, because it does take a long time. There are a lot of regulatory approvals that need to be obtained. Right now, we're trying to spread out the effort in, in different ways so that multiple countries are trying to make vaccines, um, multiple groups are trying to make vaccines, and ultimately, we hope that we'll have one that, that works. For SARS-CoV-2, we have a really huge burden in the world. We're not expecting it to die out the same way uh, SARS-1 did. And so I would say that SARS gave us this false sense of security, right? We felt this uh, is over. And a lot of uh, research funding, a lot of uh, scientific uh, focus was shifted to other things. Um, now we're learning we really needed that information. Uh, they're very similar viruses and we can build on what was done with SARS. Um, but we hope we won't have to worry as much. In the meantime, it's really better to be prepared and to invest in developing a good vaccine. So ideally, we would have a vaccine, of course. They, they, call, they can allow your immune system to cure you, certainly. So it's, it's more of an education. It will be something that you take so your immune system has the knowledge to fight it off. Um, but at the same time, it may not be feasible to wait until we have a vaccine to, you know, to e at least ease the restrictions a little bit. Um, so when we're doing something like a lockdown or the circuit breaker period in Singapore, we're really aiming to stop this transmission. Uh, even if the restrictions are eased a little bit, we have to come up with ways to sustain the benefit of this lockdown period, I would say, uh, beyond it, even if, even if we don't have a vaccine yet.